Nigeria Center for Disease Control confirms 216 fresh cases of coronavirus. COVID-19 Presidential Task Force Committee says Nigeria not ready for full reopening of its economy. In international news, global coronavirus cases nearly 5 million, with U.S. leading the world in infections and deaths. And later, English Premier League clubs to resume training. This is ANN News. I am Olaju Mukil Latunji. Nigeria's COVID-19 infection numbers are gradually climbing to levels never believed. The country recorded 216 fresh cases on Monday, bringing the total confirmed cases to 16,175. Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported on its official Twitter page there are 4,359 active cases. So far, 1,600. 44 COVID-19 patients have been discharged. Lagos leads the park with 74 cases. Katsina followed with 34 cases. 13 other states recorded infections as well. 191 patients have died. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari held a virtual meeting with state governors on the sensitization of coronavirus in all parts of their states. Buhari asked all governors to work closely with the COVID-19 Presidential Task Force to get educated on all measures aimed at reducing the spread of the pandemic. Buhari told the governors COVID-19 is beyond technology, power and resources and must be taken seriously. Plato State Governor Samuel Alung has inaugurated a research committee that is mandated to find a local cure for COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. The research team is headed by Professor Noel Wanang of the Pharmacology and Toxicology Department of the University of Jazz. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 says the two weeks ease to lockdown extension by President Mohamed Buhari was necessary to curb the increasing spread of the pandemic. Task Force Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says Nigerians have failed to comply with the ban on interstate movement, use of face mask, social distancing and other guidelines. Mustafa says despite the measures, there have been interstate movement, particularly pupils of Quranic schools in the north, the Almagiri, who are being hidden and conveyed to the south in food trucks. Mustafa said tougher measures have to be put in place in the best interest of Nigerians. He further says any relaxation will only pretend grave danger for the entire country. The committee says the two-week extension will enable other segments of the economy to prepare to reopen in the coming weeks. The extension is to also allow the NCDC to intensify efforts to trace and treat COVID-19 cases. Minister of State for Health, Dr. Olorini Bemamura, says Lagos, Kano and Bernou states account for more than half of the COVID-19 deaths in the country. Lagos State's Governor Babajide Sawalu has raised the hopes of many Lagosians with his new directives on reopening the country's commercial center. Sawalu says business owners and religious clerics are major determiners of whether all other restrictions will be lifted. The governor says the state could reopen in two weeks if there is total compliance with all directives. It says Lagos has rolled out a register to open initiative as part of reopening its economy, which means all players in the restaurant businesses, event centers, entertainment, malls and cinemas will go through a form of re-registration to assess their level of readiness. Reports by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce indicates 81% of businesses have been severely affected by the COVID-19 lockdown, with a mere 17% of the businesses indicating moderate impact. So, Olu says all worship centers will remain closed. Lagos is still the epicenter of the virus with 2,624 COVID-19 cases, 556 recoveries and 38 deaths. The regulatory authority in charge of broadcasting and telecommunications industries in the United Kingdom, Ofcom, has 
sanctioned love word television, a religious cable channel owned by founder of Christ Embassy, Pastor Chris Oyaki Lome. Ofcom says the television network was also penalized for misleading the public that 5G was the cause of the pandemic and that coronavirus is a global cover-up. The regulatory body accused the television channel of suggesting hydroxychloroquine as a cure for COVID-19 without acknowledging that its effectiveness and safety as a treatment was clinically unproven. The regulatory body concluded Love World Limited did not adequately protect viewers from the potentially harmful content in the sermon. Oyakilome had alleged the fifth generation of wireless communications technologies supporting cellular data networks was initiated to instill fear among people in actualizing the alleged agenda and that the 5G technology was an initiative of the Antichrist. Ashur State lawmakers in the House of Representatives are currently at loggerheads over the introduction of a parliamentary system for local government administration in the state. Reps member Oluwali Oke, representing Obokun Oriade Federal Constituency, describes the system as unconstitutional. Oke is calling for a speed reversal of the system in order not to jeopardize the dividends of democracy in the state. Meanwhile, Senator representing Oshun Centre, Ajibola Bashiru, who is also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, says Oke's statement is misleading and an agenda to portray Oshun State in a bad light because the local government's law has been operational for more than two years. Coming up, African Stories. Benin Republic hurts local elections amid coronavirus and later international news. Global coronavirus cases nearly 5 million with U.S. leading the world in infections and deaths. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is in the news. Most African nations' economies receive boosts from diaspora remittances each year in the billions of dollars, and many countries are drawn uh, down their expectations this year as a result of COVID-19. As Adil El Maroki reports, Egypt is uh, especially expecting a sharp decline in such remittances. 2019 saw remittances inflows reach 26.8 billion US dollars, a record high in Egypt's history. Earlier this year, January and February maintained this momentum and recorded about 37% increase in revenues during that period compared to 2019. 2020 was promising a new remittances record, but not anymore, thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. Remittances from March to June are expected to drop by up to 20%. Their flow will not stabilize before September. The main reason is that some Egyptians have been laid off, especially those from the Gulf countries. There are those who are still abroad, but because of the pandemic, are now in between jobs. And finally, there are those whose salaries have been cut. The World Bank estimates a 19.7% global drop in remittances this year. Gulf countries are the biggest contributors to Egypt's remittances revenues. So combining the impact of COVID-19 with the drop in oil prices, Egypt could be on the higher end of that estimate. I think the expected drop in remittances is one of the reasons that has pushed the government towards IMF loans. It's a precautionary move taken to cushion the economy, especially now that there are no precise projections to when this pandemic's impact will be over. Remittances in 2019 brought five times more foreign exchange to the North African country than the Suez Canal and also more than twice the revenues from tourism. It's almost as high as Egypt's entire exports, which reached 28 billion last year. It represents 9 to 10 percent of the gross domestic product. The drop in remittances this year could put millions of Egyptians under financial pressure. So far, the pandemic has consumed about $9 billion of Egypt's foreign reserves, so the government might not have much to do to help them out. 
Tunisia has taken a step ahead in the enforcement of face mask use. A startup company in the country has launched a service to detect people who are not wearing face masks. Adnan Chawaji tells us how this works. Data Vision is a multi-platform solution that allows business owners to have real-time tracking data of their visitors' behavior, such as visit count, visit duration, conversion rate, visits timeline, age group, and gender recognition. The company has modernized its platform and joined the fight against coronavirus. We've adapted our device's tracking option inside commercial shops to serve the fight against COVID-19. The real-time detection of people with or without the face mask is operational and instant. The new device can also limit or ban access to any location for individuals who do not use face masks and neglect the prevention and sanitary measures put in place by the state. Our device can be installed on any camera surveillance system. The user does not need to install new cameras. It detects people without masks, organize queues while controlling any blocking access to a facility by closing automatic gates. The multi-platform solution offers a safe work environment and reduces direct physical contact. Even people using masks which do not cover their mouth and nose are identified and isolated. Our device ensures the safety of the clients and the employees while preventing contagion. Some 32 technological initiatives aimed at helping the government to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic have so far been approved by the Joint Committee, set up within the Ministry of Communication Technologies and Digital Transformation. The Special Scientific Committee is responsible for evaluating and approving the use and distribution of Tunisian inventions by the COVID-19 task force. The government is encouraging startups to invent new devices to help in the fight against the pandemic. The ravaging coronavirus pandemic and the non-participation of some opposition parties did not stop Republic of Benin from holding its local elections on Sunday. The country eased some of the restrictions on COVID-19 in order to ensure the election went ahead. This is the Abomoye Kalavi polling station in Beni's capital, Kotonou. Despite the threat posed by the coronavirus in the West African nation, voters have come out to cast their ballots as they seek to exercise their choice in local leaders. To them, COVID-19 is just but one of many problems that they want to be addressed. I live in Cotonou, our commune needs a mayor who can fulfill the desires of citizens. We dream of building infrastructure such as markets, roads and many others, so that Cotonou becomes a major player in the sub-region. What we can expect from our elected representatives is development of Cotonou, our capital. I will still like the problems we have, especially flooding, social problems and development problems to be a top priority of the elected representatives. In an effort to minimize the spread of the virus, the Electoral Commission and other partners have put hand sanitizers at strategic points. Voters are also wearing face masks. I would like to thank the Autonomous National Election Commission, Sena, not to say the government, which did everything possible to ensure that the vote was held without contamination by the coronavirus. The vote this Sunday, May 17th, will not be an open door to the spread of COVID-19. Up to 5.4 million registered voters cast their ballot. The voter turnout is still considered a little lower than expected. Five political parties are battling it out as they seek to control over 1,800 municipalities across the country. As a vote counting gets underway, the West African nation awaits the outcome. When we return international news, Global coronavirus cases, nearly 5 million, with U.S. leading the world in infections and deaths. And later, sports. English Premier League clubs to resume training. You are watching ANN.
Hey, tell them. They told me you are the best around here. What can I do for you, sir? I want my own. Very, very simple. I don't want any shine shine. If I see any shine shine. Actually, I'd love some sequins on my skirt. And I don't like any frills. I beg, I want frills on mine. But it must not be too tight. Tight! That tight now, that is what I want. And the transition. Oh, you know what? I want a gown. Me too. I want to go to work. You know what? You have to do this. You know what? Hey, did you capture all the information? Of course not. Actually, wow. fantastic. I give my customers what they love because everyone has their unique style. So why should they wear the same thing? Just like MTN for me, which gives unique data and recharge offers just the way you like it. Just dial star one two one hash and turn up great offers every day. Everywhere you go, MTN. This used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value All-in-One Plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some talk time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra talk time with some data. And when I'm abroad, I automatically browse, chat, and call right on the same plan. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls. Whichever one you prefer, MTN Extra Value is made just for you. Welcome back. This is ANN News. The latest tally from the John Hopkins University in the U.S. has confirmed COVID-19 cases have now reached nearly 5 million globally, with more than 318,000 fatalities and nearly 2 million recoveries. The U.S. leads the world with 1.5 million COVID-19 infections and more than 90,000 deaths. Director of the U.S. Center for Con Disease Control, Robert Redfield, says the number of deaths is projected to exceed 100,000 by June the 1st. U.S. President Donald Trump says he's taking hydroxychloroquine as a preventative measure despite experts warning the drug normally taken for malaria is not effective in fighting the coronavirus. Russia's COVID-19 cases are now close to 300,000, the second highest number of coronavirus infections in the world after the United States. Brazil is the world's third worst hit nation with more than 250,000 cases. The Chinese mainland has 82,960 COVID-19 cases, of which 1,707 were imported. Also, 389 asymptomatic patients so under medical observation, China's COVID-19 death toll stands at 4,646. UK unemployment rose to its highest level last month since 1996, the first full month of the government's coronavirus lockdown. Data released on Tuesday by the Office of National Statistics showed the number of climates rose by nearly 900,000 to 2 million. That represents 69% increase and the biggest ever month-on-month -month leap. Britain's budget forecasters say the country's unemployment rate could hit 10% in the April to June period, even with the government's decision to pay the wages of millions of workers while they are only temporarily laid down. The Department of Health and Social Care said on Monday morning, nearly 247,000 persons across the country had tested positive for COVID-19 and the death toll stands at nearly 35,000. The coronavirus pandemic has disrupted immunization programs in Pakistan, leaving millions of children exposed to deadly diseases. The United Nations says the pandemic has not only interrupted vaccine supply chains, but has also left families fearful of attending clinics, creating another looming health crisis in the country. Correspondent Daniel Khan has the story. 
According to the United Nations, more than 1.5 million people die globally of diseases that could be prevented by vaccinations. And though the COVID-19 virus does not appear to make many children seriously ill, the UN says children's health could be impacted by the disruption of regular immunization services, calling it a very serious threat. 40 million children under five had missed OPV drops as we could not hold one national immunization campaign in April 2020. Uh, the reporting of the polio cases through acute flaccid paralysis surveillance system has been affected because our reporting sites, government health facilities and private clinics have been, uh, have been uh, held. And, uh, and then hence, we may be missing cases. Pakistan, along with neighboring Afghanistan, are the only remaining countries with cases of poliovirus. The disease, which mainly affects children under the age of five, can infect the spinal cord, causing paralysis. Pakistan's polio numbers have increased significantly and health experts have warned that the side effects of the pandemic and the disruption of regular life-saving immunization services can put hundreds of thousands of children at high risk. Pakistan's national immunization drive was stopped in February when the first positive case of COVID-19 appeared. Experts fear the consequences could be devastating after the coronavirus outbreak is over. The routine immunization campaign services, particularly outreach activities and mobile teams have been halted. Therefore, vaccine preventable diseases like measles, <coughs> diarrhea, meningitis and diphtheria and the morbidity and mortality will rise in Pakistan. In the past, Pakistan's polio eradication program has witnessed a backlash. Polio workers were attacked and killed by militant groups. At other times, the program was stopped due to political unrest, poor health infrastructure and government negligence. Pakistan is spending less than 1% of its GDP on the health sector and pandemics such as COVID-19 Polio and measles require reasonable financial means. Experts are calling for greater public financing to serve Pakistan's poorer populations. And despite the suspension of vaccination campaigns, health officials say routine immunization at clinics and doctors' offices against polio and vaccine-preventable diseases should continue. Up next, sports. English Premier League clubs to resume training. Please stay with us. watching ANN. Whether in your house, at your office, on your phone or online, we are there. We have the facts behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News in Sport. Football World Governing Body FIFA says it is ready to organize a charity football match to raise funds for the battle against the coronavirus. FIFA President John Infantino says it is the responsibility of the organization to demonstrate solidarity in the fight against the pandemic. Infantino says funds raised will support the development, production and equitable global access to new coronavirus essential health technologies, including diagnostic, therapeutics and vaccines. Premier League clubs are to resume training next Tuesday. If the government approves, team executives will hold talks to discuss protocols for allowing players to take part in contact training. The 20 clubs have agreed to protocols for small groups of players to train while maintaining social distancing. Inspectors will also go to training complexes to check if the rules are being followed. That is in the news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on these and other breaking stories, visit our website, nnafrica.news. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Africa TV. I am Olajumoke Olatuji. Have a pleasant evening.